Alright, in this video we study Newton's method, also known as Newton Raphson method, that is used to solve nonlinear equations numerically. Okay, let's start. So, suppose we want to solve a nonlinear equation f of x equal to 0. Here, f of x is some differentiable nonlinear function. So solving this equation means, so, uh, so if you draw the graph of this function, solving this equation means finding the x-intercepts of this function. Right? So here's the idea of Newton's method. Uh, by the way, in general, solving nonlinear nonlinear equations is very hard, and uh, it's usually not possible to find all the solutions. So we are often satisfied with finding only one of the solutions. Okay, and Newton's method is such a method. Uh, anyway, so first we start from uh, initial guess. Okay, let's say the solution is this value. Of course, we don't know beforehand, but so we just have to get a good guess. And uh, at this point, we draw the tangent line of this function. So here, the x value is this, and the tangent line at this point is something like this. Okay, So we approximate this function, f of x, by its tangent line at this point, where the x coordinate is our initial guess. So as an approximation, we have this straight line, and this crosses the x-axis somewhere. Then this becomes, this x-intercept of this line becomes our next guess. So let's start from C0 and C1, and then use this second guess to find yet another tangent line. Okay, then we draw the tangent line so here like this. Then find the x-intercept again, and that will be C2. And this will be a better approximation of the solution. Okay, the true solution is here. And we continue this process over and over. So we generate a sequence of numbers, C0, C1, C2, and so on. And that converges to a solution, let's say alpha. So this is the idea. It's very simple. So let's formalize this idea in the form of a theorem. Uh, first of all, uh, we import some conditions on this function f of x. And we assume that f of x is twice differentiable. Differentiable. And define on a closed interval, let's say i uh, is between a and b. And uh, another condition, f of a is negative, and f of b is positive. And second, for all x in the interval, we have uh, f prime of x is positive, so it's a monotone increasing function. And the second derivative is also positive. That means it's a convex function. OK, then uh, we uh, define Newton's method as follows. We generate a sequence. Okay, uh, So we generate a sequence, call it Cn. And let's say C1, we start from B, Okay, this uh, upper bound of this interval. And then Cn plus 1 is defined as Cn minus f of Cn over f prime of Cn. Okay, So if we define a sequence in this way, then the limit of the Cn as n goes to infinity converges to alpha. Okay. And this alpha, where this alpha is a solution.
of uh, f of x equal to 0. And that means f of alpha uh, gives 0. OK, so let's prove this theorem. But first, let's check all the conditions here. Uh, first of all, f of a is negative. So if you plot uh, the function uh, between a and b, let's say this is a and this is b, f of a is negative, let's say somewhere here. And f of b is positive, so it's somewhere here. And we're assuming that this function is twice differentiable, so it is a continuous function. And we are also assuming that the derivative is always positive in this interval. And the second derivative is also positive in this interval. So this means, uh, first derivative being positive, means that this function is monotone increasing. And the second derivative being posit always positive means that this function is convex. So uh, it's differentiable, so it's, it's continuous, and it's monotone increasing and convex. So it should look like something like this. Okay, it's convex and it's monotone increasing. So that means in this interval, there is only one solution that is that we call alpha. Okay, so this is important because the existence of solution is guaranteed. If it's not guaranteed, then whatever algorithm we can devise, it may not work. But here, uh, at least we know that the answer exists, so uh, we can safely proceed to construct uh, Newton's method. So we set uh, C1 to be B, okay? So that our initial guess, C1 to be B. And let's find the tangent line at this point. Okay, so tangent line at this point, it's something like this. The equation of the tangent line is y uh, equals to uh, f prime of C1 and x minus C1 uh, plus f of C1, right? And then find the x intercept, that is this point, okay? Then let's say let uh, the x-intercept intercept b c prime, intercept of this tangent line b c prime. So at x-intercept, y coordinate is 0, and f prime c1, and x is c prime and c1 and plus c f of c1. So if we solve this equation for c prime, then we get c prime equals to, uh, let's see, so negative uh, f of c1 over f prime of c1 and plus c1, okay? And Note that we divide by f prime of c1, but this cannot be zero because by condition, it is guaranteed to be always positive. So it's okay to divide by f, of f prime of c1. So now we define the c prime to be c2. Okay, c2, we define it as, uh, let's put this first, c1 minus f of c1 over f prime of c1. So this is the second equation we gave here. Okay, in this case, n is 1, so cn plus 1 is c2, and f of c1, f prime of c1. So that's this. Now we continue this process uh, again and again, and now we want to show that uh, this converges to uh, this unique solution. So how can we do that? Uh, note that we haven't used uh, this condition yet. Now we can use it. So f pr double prime being positive means that the function is convex. And the function being convex means that its tangent line is always below that function, right? So that means f of x is greater than uh, greater than this tangent line, 
Okay, so greater than any tangent line. S let's say Cn here. So x minus Cn plus f of uh, Cn. And okay, so this is because f double prime of x is always positive. And this means that, uh, so if you plot uh, again, so any tangent line uh, in, this uh, in this interval, uh, the x-intercept is always greater than alpha, right? Because this tangent line is always below the curve. So the x-intercept of this tangent line is always on the right side of the solution. So that means for any n, uh, Cn is greater than alpha. And also, uh, from uh, this equation, uh, let's write it again here. So Cn plus 1 is Cn minus f of Cn over f prime of Cn. Okay? And uh, now f of Cn is always positive because it's on the right side of the solution. Uh, where, it, where is it? So Cn always is somewhere here in this sub-interval. Okay? So in this interval, the value of the function is always positive, and uh, the value of the first derivative is always positive. So that means this term is positive. So, and this is positive, so positive minus positive number is uh, less than Cn, right? So this is Cn plus 1 is Cn minus positive number, so that means this is less than Cn, okay? So this sequence, Cn, is... Uh, monotone decreasing sequence. And also, it's bounded below. Below, uh, let's say, by alpha. So it's, it's dec so if we plot n and sequence cn, it just decreases. And it's bounded by alpha. Okay, so that means by the monotone convergence theorem, this sequence must converge. And the uh, uh, converging value is alpha. So, uh, but we actually we need to show that the converging value is alpha separately. Okay, so how do we do that? Uh, okay, so by monotone convergence theorem. Let's write uh, monotone uh, convergence convergence uh, theorem. Uh, Cn converges to some value. Let's call it beta. And if it converges, then we should have, so Cn plus 1, uh, I write it again. Uh, Cn and F prime Cn. So when this converges, then this value doesn't change anymore. So that means we should have beta is equal to beta minus F of beta over F prime of beta, right? So that means we have, uh, so this is canceled, and uh, we have, uh, so multiply both sides by this, which is positive, then we have f beta is equal to zero. So that means beta is a solution, is a solution of f of x equal to zero. But as we have discussed before, the solution is unique. But the solution is unique, is unique. Uh, therefore, beta must be equal to alpha. 
So the converging value, the limit of the sequence is alpha, which is the solution of the equation. And we are done. In this theorem, we imposed a number of conditions on, this, on the function, and such as this and this. And uh, you should experiment with other conditions. For example, how, you know, in this case, in this particular example, for this solution, we can apply Newton's method because it's increasing. Uh, if we limit, I mean, the interval between somewhere here, if we, uh, this function is increasing and convex, okay? So the conditions are satisfied. But what about this part? It's decreasing and it's not convex. Then what can we do about it? And you should experiment what if we, if we just, you know, uh, apply Newton's method regardless, then see what happens. You will find maybe sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, so let's see a concrete example. Actually, Newton's method is for computer programming. So you better write a program that implements Newton's method and apply that to solve some nonlinear equations. But it is still instructive to apply Newton's method by hand. So that's what we do here. Okay, so for example, let's find the square root of some positive number d. Okay, to do that, we define a function f of x as x squared minus d and solve the equation f of x equal to zero. Okay, if you plot this function, it looks like this. So it looks like this. And this and this are negative square root of d or positive square root of d. Okay, so if we limit to this interval, uh, let's say this is a and this is b, then we can apply Newton's method, right? So starting from b, we uh, draw the tangent line and then solve for the, the x-intercept. And from that, we again draw the tangent line and we keep on doing this until it converges. So uh, if we differentiate this function, we have 2x. So let's pick some appropriate value of b and c1 equal to b and c2 is c1 uh, minus f of x, uh, f of c1 divided by f prime of c1, which is c1 minus uh, c1 squared minus d over uh, 2c1. So let's calculate this and 2c1 and uh, 2c1 squared minus c c1 squared so that's c1 squared plus d and uh, maybe we should write like uh, 1 over 2 and c1 so this divided by this plus d over c1 and this is hopefully a little bit simpler. So for concrete value of uh, uh, this function, let's say if we want to find the value of the square root of 2, then replace this d with 2 and apply this. Uh, let's start from, uh, so maybe we can choose the interval between 1 and 2 and start from 2. Okay, uh, let me do it. So C1 is 2, and C2 is, so 1 over 2, and 2 plus 2 over uh, 2. So that is, uh, what is it? So this is 1, uh, 3 over 2. So this is 1.5. By the way, square root of 2 is something like 1.5. And so on. So, so two looks like far from 
square root of 2, but uh, c2, that is 1.5, is a lot closer to the true value of square root of 2. And what about c3? That would be 1 over 2 and 3 over 2 plus 2 over 3 over 2. So that is 1 over 2, 3 over 2, and uh, what is this? Uh, 4 over 3. And that is 6 over 9 plus 8. Uh, that is 17. And so it's 17 over 12. Uh, let me calculate this value. Okay, according to my calculator, it looks like 1.416 1 and so on. So it's again uh, a lot closer to the true value than the second guess. So you can continue this on and on and eventually get something like this number. Okay, that's all for this video. See you later.